Well, in a departure from my normal outdoor and shop type projects, uh, this afternoon I'm going to be satisfying my inner nerd. Uh, if it's rainy and stormy outside, don't really want to be out there, I get a big mess in the shop I don't want to deal with. So uh, this afternoon I'm going to be frittering away some time that could be otherwise spent on more useful endeavors, and I'm going to be building a retro gaming console. Now, when I was a little kid, I remember when Nintendo released their original Nintendo Entertainment System game console. I have some great memories of playing uh, the original Super Mario Brothers, and Mario Brothers 2 and 3 with, uh, with my brother and with friends. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. We're going to be building a, uh, a mini game console that, uh, that you can play the original Nintendo Entertainment System games on. Well, there's any number of ways to accomplish this. Uh, there's even emulator software that you can download, install on a PC, and uh, run classic games that way. But what we're going to be doing today is installing RetroPie on a Raspberry 3 uh, mini computer. And uh, Raspberry Pi is really flexible. RetroPie works great. Uh, it can emulate any number of uh, old game consoles, including the Intellivision, Atari 2600, the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, um, Sega Genesis, Game Boy. Uh, there's lots of emulators that are built into it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and install that on a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, and configure it. And uh, I'll go ahead and, and load some Nintendo Entertainment System ROMs in there. And it uh, should only take about 30 minutes or so. Hey, I've kind of got things divided up here. The stuff that's on this side is going to be what's really necessary to build the console. The stuff that's on this side is kind of optional. So, obviously we're going to need a controller. Uh, these original Nintendo controllers right here are about $6. You can buy them on Amazon or eBay. Uh, these ones are US, have a USB plug on the end of them. Uh, this one's obviously a, an original Nintendo Entertainment System one. If you're going to run emulators for different uh, game consoles, you'll need controllers for those. But uh, at the very minimum, you're going to need a controller. We've got a HDMI cable here. The Raspberry Pi board uses HDMI, so you're going to need a, uh, an HDMI cable and a compatible display that you can plug this into. Uh, we're going to need a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. It needs to be a minimum of 2.5 amps and it have a micro USB uh, plug on the end. Now, most of you guys are probably going to find that you've got a 2.5 amp power supply somewhere already in a micro USB cable. So you may or may not have to buy one of these, but if you do, it's less than 10 bucks. Uh, we're going to get some kind of a case for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the uh, Flerk case right here. And this is a nice case. It's actually got a heat sink built right into it. So we're actually going to put our Raspberry Pi board in this case right here. And we're going to need a micro SD card. I've got a, uh, a SanDisk one right here, 32 gig one. This is one I already had from one of my cameras. Uh, if you do have to buy one of these, again, less than 10 bucks. Um, a 32 gig one is, you know, seven or eight dollars for a, a clone, and a name brand one's a little over 10. So, and then you're going to need the Raspberry Pi board itself. Uh, this one's a Raspberry Pi model uh, three, model B. So uh, as, the, as of the time I'm recording this video, this is the most current version of the board. These things are a pretty powerful little machine. They have onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, they have an HDMI port. Uh, the micro, uh, micro USB is where it gets its power from. They have a uh, um, one eighth inch uh, stereo headphone out type jack, four USB ports, and then a uh, wired ethernet port. Now over here, this stuff I kind of consider optional. Uh, if you want to do multiplayer gaming, obviously you'll need a second controller. And then a keyboard is actually a really useful add-on. If you're going to do any kind of advanced configuration, you definitely need one because you, you can't do it all with the uh, controller. Uh, most people have an old USB keyboard lying around, so same here. I just went up in the attic and found one. Um, <clears throat> what I have here, though, this only cost about 10 bucks off of eBay, and this is a wireless keyboard right here. And uh, this thing's pretty cool. It's got a touchpad on it as well as mouse click buttons. And... Uh, the receivers right here, but uh, it's nice having a nice mini wireless keyboard to, to do your configurations with. Okay, first things first, we're going to put the Raspberry Pi board inside of the case. The case has got a built-in heat sink right here. thermal tape on there.
Okay, and the next thing we're going to have to do is download the RetroPie software and install it on our micro SD card. So we're going to head over to the RetroPie website. I'll go ahead and put a link in the video description. And as you can see, they've got versions to match whatever type of Raspberry Pi board you're running, whether it's a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3. So we're going to go ahead and download the Raspberry Pi 3 image. Next, we're going to go ahead and decompress the image. Uh, you can use any kind of uh, de decompression tool that can read a GZ file. Uh, 7-Zip's a popular choice. I'm using WinRAR in this case. And the next step is to take that image that we extracted and write it to the SD card using some kind of imaging tool. Uh, Win32 Disk Imager is a free tool that I used and uh, had no problems with it. And now that we've got the image on our micro SD card, we can go ahead and insert it inside the Raspberry Pi. And we'll plug in the uh, HDMI cable for the display. And the power supply. and our controller. And when you first boot into RetroPie, it'll detect that you have a game console connected, and the setup is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you basically just uh, hold the button down to match what's on the menu, and once you're all done, then you will go to the full screen main menu. All right, now that we've got our controller configured, we're gonna go ahead and go to the RetroPie menu and enable Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is going to be what we're going to use to move the ROMs actually onto the RetroPie. Okay, we're connected to the Wi-Fi network. And we can go ahead and move back to the computer and copy and paste ROMs just directly right onto the Raspberry Pi board. Okay, back here on my PC, I'm going to go ahead and open up my file explorer. I'm going to go to my network. And in my network here, you can see the RetroPie shows right up. So I've already logged into this one. Uh, the first time you do that, it'll ask for a username and password. The username is Pi, just P-I, and the password is Raspberry. Now once you do that, you'll see these shares right here, and under ROMs, it has all these different emulators right here. Uh, the one we're most interested in is the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and right now the folder's empty, there's no ROMs in here. So I'm going to go to my, where I have my ROMs stored on the computer, and I'm going to go ahead and upload the uh, entire Super Mario series. As you can see, that happened very quickly. So now all of these games are on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and back here on the TV, we will go ahead and restart the Raspberry Pi. And now that it's restarted, you can see that uh, the Nintendo is listed right here on the uh, on the main screen as an option. And uh, the games that I uploaded are now in here. So if we want to play Super Mario Brothers, the original. Terrible at this. All right, well that's it for about 50 bucks and a little under an hour's worth of my time. We got a uh, retro gaming station built, installed, and configured, and up and running here on the TV. And uh, it's time for me to see if I can dust off my rusty old gaming skills and fritter away some time. Hope you guys enjoyed watching.